Welcome to Mysteries, Myths, and Legends. I'm Taylor. I'm Savannah. Welcome to the show. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Happy Wednesday. And happy um, June, a.k.a. Happy Pride Month. Yay. yay. <laughs> <laughs> we love all the rainbows and all the stores now. Absolutely. Yes, we do. Um, it's the, honestly the most, like, visually pleasing time of year to go into mm-hmm. a store. Honestly, though, I think it's weird that it's so capitalized it on. Is. It is. I mean, it's it, it's good and bad, I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mixed feelings. But, oh, I mean, happy pride feelings. either way. True. True. Um, okay. First and foremost, I know this is the moment that you've all been waiting for. Our review of Harry's house. Oh, yes. Oh, Amazing. 12 out of 10. Crying. I sobbed. All last weekend, I sobbed. Not even kidding. Yeah. I, I think, I mean, it's been like a week. I'm still taking it in. Same. <laughs> Same. It's just. <gasps> oh, man. It's an experience. I love it. If you haven't listened to it, definitely go listen to it. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the love of my life, Harry Styles. So... Oh, I thought you meant the song. <laughs> also the song. Yeah, the song too. <laughs> it's a good one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, oh, also, guys. We went and saw Tame Impala, and honestly, that experience changed my life. It was insane. I it have was never, so much fun. I have never in my life seen anything like that. Yeah. Ever. Like, there were, they had crazy lights going. The light show and, was ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And, like, these, like, trippy backgrounds mm-hmm. um, on stage and everything, and then there there was, like, a bunch of confetti. It yeah. Was, it, was, it was crazy. It was so fun. So yeah. if you ever get the also, chance, definitely I was in the him. main crowd, like the crowd, like closest to the stage mm-hmm. and they were throwing water bottles into us because everybody, there were like people passing out because it's, you know, it was hot, gets hot yeah. in there. Yeah. Um, and me and my sister who's standing next to me, we both got hit by water bottles in the <laughs> face. So that was fun. That is funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it happens. It does, you know, it really does. Um, I remember at one point, because, like, Savannah and her sister went up forward, and we were the rest of us were stayed, stayed back a little bit in the crowd. But mm-hmm. we were also in, like, the front part. But there was at one point where, the, like, it was getting really full, and people, like, the security was, like, blocking off the access. Because we were yeah, standing I, pretty much I figured access. that would happen, yeah. And people started, like, rushing. And I was like, please, I'm, this is not, I do not want that to happen right now. Yeah. But they stopped it, so thank goodness, because mm-hmm. I was afraid for a hot second. That I was going to get stampeded, but yeah. we did not. And it was very fun. So 10 yeah. out of 10 would recommend to go see Tam and Paula if you ever have the chance. Yeah, definitely. Even if you don't know the music that yeah, well, it doesn't like, matter. I didn't it even really know the music well, but it was amazing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It was such a vibe. Um, but please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Um, Mm -hmm. hmm. okay oh okay I forgot my one last intro topic that I have so if you haven't seen um, there's a new like documentary style movie what is it a biopic oh I really feel like it's biopic but I know I hate hate that it's not biopic (laughs) but it's it's biopic yeah so there's a new movie about Elvis Presley and if you've listened to the episode you know I've covered like the mystery behind the death of him. And mm-hmm. so the pr- the movie premiere was like yesterday or the day before, like as I'm recording this. And I saw that like the star who plays Elvis, who is Austin Butler, um, walked the red carpet with Priscilla Presley. <gasps> oh my God. And so then that got me thinking, dude, if Elvis is still alive, what if he was there? That's crazy. Because there was thousands of people there. Like, you know, it could have, I mean, he could have pretended to be like a cameraman. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like, if he, if I was alive and they made a movie out of me, I would want to go. Like, secretly I mean, undercover. You yeah. Know? So, who knows? Huh. If anybody has any evidence of that, send it to me because I want to see. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like somebody out there at least has, like, a suspicion. Like, oh, this guy was almost... Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, I don't know about that, but. Mm-hmm. Could be true. Could be true. But, um, yeah, that's all the intro topics I have this week. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much what I have, too. So. <laughs> nice. Okay, let's get into it. Okay. So, this week I have this crazy, weird 
conspiracy story. I don't know. Ooh. Um, called the Philadelphia Experiment. Oh, okay. Have you ever heard no. of anything like that? I, don't think I so. hadn't heard of it. Um, I had actually looked up. Uh, I was looking for something that had time travel involved Ooh. in it, and this. It was listed on Wikipedia as, like, a story with time travel, but it didn't... It honestly doesn't even seem like it's time travel. That's but interesting. We'll see. We'll see what you think. But it's... I don't know. It does, I guess, have to do with time in some way. I don't know. Let, let's just get into it. Let's do it. So, this guy, Carl M. Allen, who was an ex-merchant mariner, or... Mariner? Mar- I don't know. Yeah, Maybe you know I what? I actually had this debate this weekend. Is oh, really? it Mariner or Mariner? I think it's Mariner, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I think it's Mariner. I think I'm going to sit it wrong. Um, he witnessed an alleged, alleged experiment where the U.S. Navy attempted to render um, the USS Eldridge invisible. Oh. Oh. Yes. That, Okay. <laughs> So that's that's the summary of it. Um, this guy claims that he saw this ship disappear. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. So he says that this happened um, around October twenty eighth of nineteen forty three, which was during World War Two. Okay. Um, and this story actually surfaced in nineteen fifty five, so people didn't really hear about it during that time. Like. 10 years afterwards, I guess. Okay, wait. So you're saying that this man saw this ship disappear around World War II times? Mm-hmm. That sounds awfully familiar to my story last week. <laughs> Just had yeah. to throw that out there. Yeah, I guess it does. Maybe. Hmm. What if it was the Flying Dutchman? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's a different kind of ship. but yeah. It's also not in the same place. But yeah. Strange coincidence still. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. Could be a similar phenomena. True. That's true. Um, I'll get into what they think it is mm. in, in a little bit. But so this story is like kind of crazy. It's like a little bit all over the place, but I'll try to make it connected. Okay. <laughs> so this guy, um, Carl Allen, which I'll just call him Allen. Um, he sent a book of handwritten annotations Referring to this experiment that he says he saw. He sent it to the U.S. Navy. Mm-hmm. Um, their research organization. And he marked it Happy Easter. Oh, okay. <laughs> so basically he like took this book. And it was a book called The Case for the UFO. Mm-hmm. Um, by Morris K. Jessup. So, yeah, uh, this book was, like, about, um, like, UFOs, like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, about, like, how UFOs are a thing and, like, you should look into them more, you know? Yeah. Something like that. But in this book, there were, like, handwritten notes on the sides, annotations, um, just, like, all throughout it. Mm-hmm. So he took this version and sent it to the U.S. Navy. Okay, yeah, he had, to, he had to add his own input, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the notes that he was making in it were, like, connecting it to the, like, experiment he said he saw. Mm-hmm. So he's like, okay, these, I guess, like, maybe in the book they talk about sh- UFOs disappearing like that. Oh, okay. And he was, like, connecting it, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so, yes. And this information like surfaced around 1955 like i said and people originally thought it was just a hoax like they did not believe this story at all yeah i can see why they did not believe it Mm -hmm. especially in the 50s like i don't think anybody really was out here trying to believe crazy stuff like that no 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 um which is kind of sad i mean that's it's probably so boring right i was like that sounds like no fun (laughs) yeah um and several versions of the story have surfaced over the years that, like, sometimes contradict each other. <laughs> okay. So, you know, it, it's not really positive what the full timeline and story is. Um, mm-hmm. But I'll try to tell it as best I can. 
Um, the U.S. Navy said, of course, they say that, like, this never happened. Like, the, the boat never disappeared and stuff. Um, that's their claim. Mm-hmm. But, I don't know. Uh, he also, um, Alan, the guy who sent in that book, he also was writing letters to the author of the book. Oh. Um, Jessup. He, um... He, like, wrote him letters saying not to investigate the levitation of UFOs. Okay. Why? I See, I don't know. He's like, just stop all your work, I guess. But I thought, you know, if you're writing annotations in this side of this, aren't you, yeah. like, a fan of that stuff? Right, right. Hmm. But, I mean, the only thing I can think of is that he didn't want him to be attacked by, like, the U.S. Navy and stuff. Yeah, I know that definitely makes sense. But, like, also, why did he send the book to them? And, I don't know. It's just... It's like, a little what? strange. <laughs> yeah. kind of makes no sense. Mm-hmm. Um, he also put forward a story of dangerous science. Um, it was based on the unpublished theories by Albert Einstein. Okay. Um, and he claims that the scientist Franklin Reno, he put these theories into practice at the Philadelphia Naval Shipyard, and that's what, like, made the ship invisible. Oh, okay. So, like, this guy Franklin Reno, like, took Albert Einstein's ideas and... (laughs) Made it invisible. Okay. Yeah. That... Hmm. So there's no, like, specifics on how he made it invisible? Well, there kind of is. So his theory was, like, it was called unified field theory. Okay. Which was, like, it was, like, the interrelated nature of electromagnetism Mm -hmm. and gravity. I mean, that makes sense. I I mean, yeah, like, in an idea, like, okay, magnets and gravity. Yeah. Sure. Sure, (laughs) They seem like they do a lot of unexplained things. Right. So. Yeah. So this was like, um, the theory was like, you could get these two, um, things, electromagnetism and gravity and put them together into a single field called unified field. Mm -hmm. And then that could like, um, I think it also, it's, I don't know if it was like invisibility or just like, um, teleportation right i was thinking like is that where the time travel aspect comes in because yeah okay yeah that okay well listen i don't know i would personally i need to learn how to teleport myself so if that is true i would love to learn see yeah (laughs) i know (laughs) honestly i mean i am not um you know well versed on either of these so it's like absolutely not yeah and like the limited amount that we know it's like okay that that sounds like it would work exactly (laughs) also like even the scientists hardly know like about gravity and magnets and all that so Mm -hmm. actually side note though like i have always been obsessed with back to the future yeah (laughs) yeah we i think we've talked about this many times yeah we might have talked about (laughs) this but you know in the second movie they have like hoverboards yeah and i was obsessed with like oh my god i want to invent a hoverboard i want to see how you can do it and i was like maybe you could use magnets yeah (laughs) so how's that how's that going for you savannah have you figured it out oh no 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 (laughs) just had to i had to ask (laughs) <laughs> but, like, at one point, I was like, oh, okay, I, I get these boards that have magnets, and then you have to have, like, you have to use the specific skate park that has magnets yeah, the, the magnets other way. Are, I and mean, listen, that's not too bad of an idea. See, that's what I'm saying. And <laughs> I was, like, I was, like, 10 coming up with this. Okay. Like, yeah. We need to, okay, copyright, this is our idea. Don't, <laughs> nobody take it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyways, like, electromagnetism and stuff, like, that is such an interesting topic um just definitely, in general. definitely um but then when you bring in teleportation it's like whoa what um so the teleportation comes in where he um the guy who says that he saw it um alan he says that the destroyer escort the what was it called the uss eldridge mm-hmm He says that it was made invisible and teleported to Norfolk, Virginia 
for several minutes and then appeared in the Philadelphia shipyard again. Okay, and how does he know? See, I that's the part where it's like, how do you know it's Virginia? I right. Don't know. Like, because he wasn't there. Right. Like, you were in Philadelphia. Like, I don't know. Right. I don't know. I, he must have heard it from someone else or something. That's just what he claims okay. happened. Um, And he says that he saw it while he was serving aboard the SS Andrew Ferusif, which I guess was another ship. Um, so there's that. Uh, but he said, okay, so he says that it teleported, but he also, but like other people say that it also traveled back in time for like 10 seconds. Like only 10 seconds back? Mm hmm. Hmm. Which I don't really understand that either, but. <laughs> I feel like if that was the case, he wouldn't have seen it disappear. He would have seen it go backwards. Right? I mean, if it, if it teleported though. Oh. So you're saying it's teleporting <laughs> and going back in time at the same time? Yes, 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 yes. Oh. So maybe it, like, teleported and then it came back 10 seconds earlier oh. from what it's supposed to. Okay. I mean, yeah, that's... That maybe. But also it's, like, I don't really understand how that was calculated, the 10 no, seconds. Right. Right. <laughs> that's just what everything said. I was like, okay. <laughs> well, okay, wait. So were there people on this boat? Could, like... Yes. So, so did they say it was, like, 10 seconds? Okay, see, this, I was about to get to the people. Okay. <laughs> so they, there's honestly, like, I haven't really seen any accounts from the people who are on the, on crew, mm -hmm. but there are, like, accounts of, like, what the effects of this were on people. Mm-hmm. Um, so apparently the crew had really bad side effects. So, um, they, some people, like, went insane. Mm-hmm. Um, some suffered from, okay, this one, intangibility, which is like, does that mean you like can't hold something? Or <laughs> that literally means you can't hold something? I guess, yeah. So you turn into a ghost? You're I literally know. a ghost? That's interesting. Or so, is it just their, like, reality, like they're shifting back into whatever, wherever they were? Yeah, maybe. Maybe something more like that. Hmm. Their, like, mindset is, like, I don't know. Yeah, this is giving um, me very um, manifest vibes, if you've ever seen that show. <laughs> of course I haven't. <laughs> um, <laughs> but they also had, like, some people were frozen in place. Oh. Which, I guess, makes sense if you're messing with time. I don't know. Um, and some people were just nauseous, which, you know. Yeah. Makes I mean, sense. they were probably just seasick. And then the worst one, I... This one's pretty bad. Some people were embedded in the metal structures of the ship afterwards. Oh, my God. Okay. That's interesting that you say that because I was going to ask, like, if somebody were to time travel or, like, teleport, do you teleport back in the same exact spot or could you end up, like, in a really bad situation? Yeah. So See. that's... So they ended up in a really bad situation. See, I think that has to do with, like, okay, if this was teleportation, like, it's obviously the first time or, like, one of the first times yeah. ever. So yeah. it's not going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And the people on board were probably put back, like, slightly off from where they were before. Yeah. And, like, the boat was slightly off. Like, yeah. So it was Yikes. Just, that they, is a big yikes. Teleported back to, like, the wrong spot and got stuck in the boat that is horrifying so that's just that's just alleged you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's no no proof but uh um except for this guy's account and like some people saying oh yeah this happened mm -hmm. um so what else did i have oh and this is like um in pop culture things too i'll go over it more later but i have right here that like pop culture made it like big jumps in time mm -hmm. <laughs> but in reality like people say it was only 10, 10 seconds, seconds yeah so. <laughs> um so jessup like the guy who wrote that book he wrote back to alan mm -hmm. and said like okay well you're telling me all this happened with the theory that i wrote my book but like give me information to prove that this happened exactly that's how i'm feeling 
Mm -hmm. And, of course, he referred him to a newspaper article that had never existed. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. That sounds He's like, right. oh, yeah, this covered the event. It's like, it's not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's that. Um, and then in 1957... Uh, Jessup was invited to the Office of Naval Research, Ooh. Um, you know, because of his, his book was sent to them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and he was shown the book with all the annotations and stuff. And he's like, wait, I know that handwriting. This guy has been writing me letters for like <laughs> months now. <laughs> so there's that. Um, so he was able to recognize the handwriting and like connect the two. You yeah. Know? Mm -hmm. Um. And there were actually two officers who were investigating the book, Captain Sidney Sherby and Commander George W. Hoover. Um, and Hoover took special interest in the case, and he was, like, the main investigator on it. He actually went and discussed the annotations with somebody else, um, Austin and Stanton. And Stanton took interest, and, like, he actually produced copies of the book oh wow so like more people could look at it and see if there's anything yeah about this you know he made 127 copies <laughs> okay that's very specific yeah um i think it was just like maybe that's how many people he was going to give it to i don't know yeah um but they became known as the vero edition oh. so they're probably still out there i mean i would read it, it seems interesting yeah i would also read it mm-hmm like, I want to see what these this guy's theories are, if, right. it, if he's a, actually a whack job or, like... Right, like, I, like, I want to know. Uh-huh. I mean, I don't know. And also, I made it through, like, so much research, and then I found out that there were actually three different people who made annotations. Oh, uh, what? Or, that's what it seemed like, anyway. There were three different handwritings. That's interesting. But also, personally, I think I have multiple different handwriting styles. Like, depending yeah. on many different factors. Mm hmm So. Well, I mean, I'm going to spoil it because I think they they were able to prove that it was all the same guy. Mm, yeah. That's so, exactly what I thought. Yeah. That's. Hmm. But they didn't prove that until the 80s, I think. So. Mm, that's when, like, handwriting, like, whatever got, like, mm. I don't know, like, okay. analyzing handwriting and stuff. Yeah. Okay. But when they they didn't know that it was three different or that it was the same guy, they thought it was three different ones. Um, the first one, it was somebody named Jemmy. I guess they wrote their name in it, uh, um, or he wrote a random name. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that was in blue violet ink. And then Alan, so his like normal handwriting. Yeah was in blue, and they referred to him as Mr. A until they found out who it was. And then the other person that they didn't know who it was, they referred to them as Mr. B. Okay. So, typical. Um, so, yeah. And I'm guessing they all agreed on stuff because, you know, it was the same guy. Uh, yeah, of course. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then Jessup... He actually tried to publish more books on UFOs afterwards, but he was sadly unsuccessful, and this is sad. Unfortunately, he took his life no. on April 20th of 1959. That's sad. Yeah. Um, yeah. He had, like, a really big fan, though. <laughs> it was yeah, insane. he sure did. He really did. Um, and then people have also tried to get more info on Carl Allen. Mm-hmm. You know, the guy who started this yeah. whole thing. But nobody could really find anything out about him. That's really weird. Yeah. Um, he the, People did find his family. Like, the reporters found his family. Um, and they were interviewed. But um, all they really said was that he had a fantastic mind. But he was a drifter. Mm -hmm. So, like, I guess that's why they couldn't find him. Yeah. And he was a master leg puller. Okay. So hmm. they didn't, I guess they didn't believe him. Yeah, it sounds, sounds like they did not. Mm-hmm. Um, and another hole in this story, um, other than this guy, like, just being kind of crazy, um, is that people say, like, the USS Eldridge, which is the ship that he says disappeared, um, people say that 
It may not have even been in Philadelphia at the time, he claimed. <laughs> Was it in Virginia? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, people say that it, like, I think I saw that it had, like, been recently, like, commissioned and oh. made. And it was traveling through the Bahamas. Oh, wow. Like, on its on its maiden voyage. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I don't know what to believe because I didn't see proof either way. Right. But that's what people say. Um, and some people say it, like, literally was never even in Philadelphia ever. Oh. So, I don't know. Oh, no. Um... I don't yeah. know if I can believe my man, Alan. I know. I kind of want to because, like, that would be cool. But I mean, it's definitely possible, you know. Uh-huh. And this one was um, this story, the Philadelphia experiment, was also um, in the Wikipedia for it. The Montauk. Is that what it's called? Yeah, the Montauk Project. Yeah, that one was referenced with oh. it. So it's like, hmm. I don't know. I can see how they could be semi related. Yeah. I mean, yeah, right. And also you have to think, like, if this is true, like, yeah, this man sounds crazy. But, like, if it is true, he did hand it over to the Navy. And, like, what if the military just, like, twisted it to make him seem crazy? Because it's that, true. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know. I could go either way on this because yeah. the government does do crazy things. And, and they do not want, like, stuff like this coming out that it's yeah. real. Like, if, yeah. if it is real, which I, I mean, I do think that it is real. So, and I think. The military might have more knowledge about it than we know. Mm-hmm. I'm not a crazy conspiracy theorist, but I am a little bit of one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I could, I don't know. I feel like I could go either way on this one. Me too. Um, I don't know. The Navy says it's science fiction. Of course. So <laughs> of course, of course. Like, there's also, there's movies <laughs> about oh. it. Um, in 1984, the Philadelphia Experiment, the movie, was created. And yeah. part two came out in 1993 oh so snap there's, okay there's a movies. sequel yeah yeah we're gonna have to find them yeah but... we need to watch them mm-hmm. so yeah that is the philadelphia experiment that's and wild it's i just i'm speechless i don't know, I don't know what to believe <laughs> yeah i, I want to believe my man alan so bad right because like i feel like nobody else believes him somebody has to be on his side right. i feel like it might have to be me I know. I wonder if this UFO guy, I don't think he believed him, but like, I don't yeah. know. He right, was like, like basing it off of his book and his theories. And yeah, he's like, oh like, my gosh, but, this is why it disappeared. But what did he believe? Like, did, like, did the UFO, the UFO guy even believe in aliens? Um, like, or like time travel? I, it was like, the book was called The Case for UFOs. Or the True. case for unidentified flying objects. Yeah. So he was trying to say like, look, they're out there. Yeah. Um, and I, and he, de- he referenced, um, Einstein's theories, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. About the unified that's... field theory. Hmm. So. That's yeah. so interesting. I'm just trying to think about it. Yeah. <laughs> like, is it true I... or not? I just don't know. I really just don't know. I know. <laughs> it's a crazy one. I need to like go back and read some some vintage ufo books like i want book, same this book same. honestly sounds kind of cool <laughs> I, okay so there's only 127 of them um no 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 there's 127 of the one that has the annotations okay but i want that one yeah honestly true <laughs> um i don't know i don't know if they're out for like people to see like I, it would probably be so hard to find yeah no you're right <laughs> They were given so to, like, Navy people Dang and it. stuff, right? I yeah, know. I mean, man, I want it. Okay. I want to look it up to see if I can find yeah, it. Yeah, we definitely know. should. That's <laughs> wild. Well, you know, I really hate unanswered things, so I hate that story. However, I don't actually hate the story. I mean, I just, I mean I we have hate. to have some mysteries every now and then. Well, it's in our title. <laughs> no, I know. So what I was going to say is I also, the reason I am so mad, because I also have a mystery for you this Oh, week. my gosh. That is just going to leave us also unanswered so okay. i'm just gonna have a bunch of questions this time <laughs> that's okay <laughs> no i love i do love a good mystery i just i'm a person that needs all the answers so mm-hmm. um this week for you i have the mystery also slash legend of captain kid dun dun Ooh. dun okay, so obviously okay. this is a person you know yeah. so I have really been on just such a kick for pirates right now 
So here I am yet again to tell you another story of a pirate. <laughs> um, however, this one was not intentional. See, I'm just going to be thinking about our flag means death again. <laughs> um, yeah, and you really will. So, mind oh, you story. <laughs> but no, this one was unintentional. I just looked up, like, I wanted to do a mystery. Um, yeah. And so I just looked up some mysteries, and I found this one, and then he just happened to be a pirate. So mm-hmm. I was like, okay, well, it's meant for me to do. So um, Captain Kidd was a well-known pirate he was born in Scotland in in 1654. So oh, well. the man Stroke. was, yeah. We're going back. back. Yeah, we are. Um, and so his dad was a sailor. And so he wanted to grow up to be just like his dad. And he did. So eventually he moved to New York from Scotland. And he wanted to, like, start this new life for himself. And so, yeah, he lived in New York City for many, many years of his life. And that's mainly where, like, all of his pirate business took place. So, Captain Kidd was allegedly one of the best pirates, like, ever. Which I'm like, okay, I've never heard of him. But See, I, I've heard that name, but I didn't realize he was, like, yeah. one of the best pirates. Well, apparently he was. And huh. he was, like, one who just refused to ever stop looking for treasure. And he would always... Take people's treasure. He, he just wanted more and more and more. Okay. So, but however, what's crazy is that he never actually spent any of the treasure that he earned, you know, because he was so busy, like, pirating other people for more money. But he just, like, never ended up using it, which is very okay. interesting to me. So he just, like, kept getting all this money and just... Yeah, saving was, like, it. like, sitting on it. Yeah, literally. Could never huh. be me. <laughs> honestly, like, what? what's the point, then? Right. I think he was just, honestly, I think he was doing it not even for the treasure. I think he was just having so much fun. I, I can see that. <laughs> me too. <laughs> um, but we're taking a little, a quick turn, a very sharp left turn right now. Um, he was tragically hanged for his piracy in 1701 in London. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. However... Legend has it that Captain Kidd buried treasure somewhere on Liberty Island. And if you don't know what Liberty Island is, that is the island in New York City where the Statue of Liberty is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I have heard of that. Yeah. So people have searched for this treasure for nearly three centuries and it has never been found. Dun, dun, are you even allowed to search there now i don't know i I don't know i feel like the security is tight yeah so it's probably under the statue (laughs) right that's what i'm thinking that is exactly what i'm thinking Mm -hmm. um so before we get more into that um i'll tell you a little bit more about his life so not only was he a pirate this man actually helped build the original trinity church which is wild to me so, if you don't know what that is, it's like a church and a cemetery in New York City where, like, almost all of the famous historical figures are buried, such as Alexander Hamilton. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. So, he actually, like, literally built the church, was, which shocked me because that's, like, that's wild. Um, that is crazy for a pirate to be, like, he right, built a church. <laughs> right. And so, actually, this is, he just was living his best life, doing everything that he wanted to do. Um, He was also not only the best pirate, but he was one of the most active parishioners at Trinity Church um, at at the same time that he was the pirate. Yeah. What? (laughs) Yeah. Like. Okay. Okay. Pirates obviously like are violent people. Like it was he violent? Yes. Yes. He was a regular old pirate, man. Oh my gosh. And he was just like a godly person. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Very much so. That's insane. Like, it's so insane. Was Um, he, like, Catholic and he was just going to confession? (laughs) Okay, honestly, that's what I was going to say. I did not even look up. I do not even know, like, what type of church Trinity Church is. See, I mean, if it was that kind, he's probably like, okay, I can do all this. Yeah, so I killed this, this, this. Yeah. (laughs) I'm going to say that's probably what it is. But I'm I'm not. (laughs) Don't quote me on that because I'm not sure. (laughs) Yeah. um, Yeah. So, yeah, this man, he was very much so into this church. And actually, he owned a pew there for his family to always sit at, which I did not realize was a thing. But apparently, this was, like, a very popular church. So, Hmm. to own a pew was, like, very, like, high class. Like, that's my pew. Don't sit on it. Um, (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So, he was married to a woman named Sarah. 
and they had two children. But after being a family man for a while, he said that he felt trapped by society and that he just had, quote unquote, pangs for the sea, which means he just longed to be a pirate on the sea for his life, which (laughs) reminds me so much of our favorite new show, Our Flag Means Death. I know. It really does. (laughs) And now I'm sitting here like, is that who that character is based on? I'm not no. sure. No, I mean, that character is, was the actual person. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, Steed Bonnet. You gotta Steed. do him next. Okay, honestly. Because Steed Bonnet was a real person and okay, he was I didn't really called the gentleman that. pirate. Okay, guys, just get ready for another pirate story. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not next week, but in the future, I promise. Because you, you've already covered Blackbeard. So, yeah, I mean. exactly. I'm telling you, I love pirates. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, also, shout out to that show again, like, if you haven't seen it. Yeah, if you haven't seen it, it's on HBO. Um, Our Flag Means Death. It's amazing. Please go watch it, because mm-hmm. it's so good. Yes. Um, so, where? I lost my spot. Okay, so, Captain Kidd. He was licensed, actually. This is crazy. He was licensed to raid enemy ships in wartime. So, he was actually, like, a licensed pirate, in a way. Which is cool, because he was, like, a very, like, high-up sailor. So, in times of war, he was given permission by the government to raid enemy ships. And that's, I think, where his love for it came from originally. But then he was like, I love it so much, I'm going to raid them not during war. So, he just, a pirate life was for him, 100%. Um, And he eventually would raid any ship it doesn't matter if it looked like they had no, no treasure. It doesn't matter. He wanted to raid it. He was like, let's go. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's, and... that's insane. Like, literally, what just... He's like, I'm going to just take your crackers that you have in storage down there. <laughs> literally. Literally. He was just like, I don't care. It's for the fun. Oh um, and so, as I said, he would raid literally any ship that he could. And one day, he raided an English ship, which was literally how he got caught and hanged. Because... You know, the Englishmen weren't too fond of that back in the day. Mm -hmm. So Captain Kidd ran his ship using the motto, no plunder, no pay. So basically that means you have to work really hard or you won't get paid. Um, Okay. (laughs) Why does it sound like he didn't even pay anyone though? Right. That's what I'm saying. Right. Right. That's what I'm saying. And also (laughs) he was kind of an angry man and was like kind of known to lash out really bad. And actually, he beat one of his crewmen to death with a bucket. Oh, my God. And so we're not actually 100% sure that that's true. It is rumored. Um, But regardless of if that's true or not, his crew did mutiny against him. And that is, like, proven. And But their their reasoning was that because he killed one of his crewmen with a bucket. Um, And so after his crew <laughs> mutinied against him, that was kind of the start to his downfall. Um, and this is a little disturbing. So after that, that's when he like went on a kick and started raiding all of the ships and Uh kind of by himself. And that's when he got into the trouble with the English boat that he raided. And so probably because he didn't have his crew to back him up. Exactly. Exactly. He started making real dumb decisions. Hmm. Um, so this is a little disturbing. So skip a little bit if trigger warning. (laughs) Um, but after he was hanged, his body was displayed alongside the river Thames as a warning to anyone who may be considering the pirate life as a career. Oh, my God. Yeah. For, like, weeks. So, <gasps> that's, you know, that's kind of bad. Kind of bad. So, into the spookier part of the story. Um, Captain Kidd's ghost has been spotted many times in the Trinity Church Cemetery. And people who have seen his ghost say that he looks like he's wandering around in search of the grave that he should have been buried in. Because he felt like, you know, I mean, first of all, he had a pew and a plot at this church, right? Because, mm-hmm. like, he, that is his favorite place. Um, and because he spent all the time there and he literally, like, helped build the place, he had always assumed that he would be buried there. However, he was buried in London after, like, they hung his body up on the wall. They, like, just buried him in a grave there somewhere. So okay. that's kind of sad. Like, I he's mean, just. But, like,. <laughs> What did he th- think was going to happen? He's like turned into a pirate. Yeah, I don't know what they he They think he's going to, sh- they're sh- going to ship him back. 
Like, I think that's exactly I what I thought. I don't, I don't know. Like, if he know. broke the law, they're probably like, we don't care about you. We don't care about you. <laughs> right. And they definitely did not. So, so mm-hmm. yeah. However, that's not the only place that his ghost has been seen. Um, his ghost has also been reported to be the guardian of the pedestal of the Statue of Liberty. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah. So, why? Um, you might ask. So... Also in his life, I'm telling you, this man has just a man of all, jack of all trades. He's done it all. So before his pirate times, he was stationed at the old Fort Wood, um, which is on Liberty Island. So he actually did a lot of work there as well. And actually, what's also really interesting is that um, they hung a lot of pirates on that island. Um, And even more on a really close island, which... It was back then known as Gibbet Island, but today that's Ellis Island. Mm. So I guess, you know, Captain Kidd just thought, like, you know, if I do eventually get caught, they'll just hang me, you know, like where I wanted to be buried because that's what they were doing in America. But, like, huh. that's not what they were doing in England. So tragically, I think that's that was his thought process behind it. They were like, you know, they get their bodies get shipped wherever they want to be buried. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, but nope, that did not happen. So, um, yeah. So on to now the mystery. So, um, let's see. Okay. So two different people, Sergeant Gibbs and Private Carpenter were assigned to the fort in 1825. So the Statue of Liberty, which was Fort Wood at the time. Um, Mm -hmm. so they were just basically there to just, you know, protect the Statue of Liberty, make sure nobody's doing anything, you know dangerous or whatever so they had actually heard of this alleged buried treasure that captain kid had alleged like you know just they had heard about the legend they were like let's see if we can find it i mean we don't have anything else to do in the middle of the night that's exactly what i would do too um (laughs) go look for buried treasure yeah if i had heard there was some and i just happened to be there and i had nothing else to do girl Mm -hmm. i would be on it um so here's the most wild part of it all okay they found a box buried on the island that happened to look like like a treasure chest ish like of what a pirate would keep treasure in but when they went to get it out of the hole and open it up they claim that the ghost of captain kid rose up from the hole that this box was in and he literally like scared them so bad that both of the men fainted immediately on site oh my god and when they woke up they both claimed to have seen a demonic figure rise from the soil breathe sulfuric fumes (laughs) of course and glide around them in a menacing way and that the evil dead pirate was hell-bent on protecting his treasure oh that's quote for quote what they said (sighs) now listen that's a little dramatic in my opinion (laughs) like I mean, it is pretty dramatic, but, like, that got me. Like, that's crazy. No, that's so scary. And also, like, you have to think, like, these are very, like, strong military men. Like, Mm -hmm. and they were that scared that they pass out. That's weird. Also, though, here's an alternate theory, and this is just straight up my theory. They said that they smelled some fumes when they dug this hole. What if they, like, bursted a pipe or something? And then, (laughs) like, they smell, and that's why they pass out. And, like, yeah. maybe it made them hallucinate to see a ghost, you know? Yeah. I, that, that is fully just my a theory of Yeah, or mine. just, like, something in the ground. Yeah, exactly. Some kind of anything. Like, I'm sure it's huh. happened before, so. Yeah. I don't know. Could they be telling the truth? I don't know. They stood by that till the day they died, that that's what mm-hmm. they saw. And both of them agreed. So Or they maybe they just hadn't slept. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they were just, like, goofy. Goofy with mm-hmm. the tiredness. Um, so... Um, moving along, that's pretty much, like, the only, like, very much so believed story. Like, a lot of people believe them, which is interesting, because I'm like, I kind of don't know if I do. Yeah. (laughs) But, apparently, people believe them. So, um, Liberty Island is actually relatively small, so you would imagine that, like, we probably would have found the treasure by now. Like, if there really was one, you know? Like, it's literally pretty much just the Statue of Liberty, 
on the island. Right. Like, I've I've been to the Statue of Liberty. Oh, so you've been there? I've never been. But um, mm. have you been, like, to the island? I mean, I've been to the Statue of Liberty, so if that's where it's at. Yeah, no, it is. It is. I, I, did, I didn't know. Because some people the just, top like. top of it. Oh, really? Yeah. No like, way. As, as far as you can get up. I don't think you're, you're allowed to the very top, but, like, you're allowed pretty high up. Yeah. You really um, did. Yeah. we went. I that's went for fine. Girl Scouts. That's so <laughs> I fun. mean, because I didn't. Living no, in Philly, it's not I that know. far. <laughs> I um, know. It's just crazy. <laughs> but, yeah. So, I have I have been there. It was a while ago. I mean, I wasn't. Yeah. wasn't too young I might have been in I might have been in high school actually I don't know mm-hmm. but yeah I've been there but and like the it, island's small, small. Yeah, yeah. yeah 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 so I mean you would kind of assume that it's you know that we would have found it by now um however there have been countless like thousands upon thousands because think about how many people visit there like yeah millions no it's always crowded too yeah exactly so there have been thousands upon thousands of stories of people just seeing his ghost on this island as if he's protecting something. Yeah. And not only is that interesting, but also he had buried treasure in multiple different locations and people, and he had told people that he did this. And so, um, Oh, I lost my spot. Okay. So we, so the allegedness is, is their treasure on Liberty Island. But mm-hmm. what we do know for a fact is that he buried today's equivalent of $300,000 in East Hampton, New York, on Gardiner's Island. And we know this because he actually was given permission by the Gardiner family to bury the treasure on their island. Uh, What? And that treasure has been found and was proven that it was true. So that kind of makes... That's a quick, sharp turn. Now we've got another sharp left turn. Why would... Okay, now I'm just questioning, why would he, like, ask permission and stuff? Right. Like, wouldn't they, would they not just bear, dig it up and spend it? like? Uh, I mean, they didn't. Yeah. So, I, I don't, don't know. know. I think that they but were friends. I think that yeah, they were, they and had he had a idea. lot of connections from being in the church, being, like, working in all these pl- different places. Like, he yeah. knew a lot of people. Yeah. So, I don't know. I feel like that makes the story way more believable because he did, in fact confirmed have treasure buried in other places and that wasn't the only place it was confirmed um he also okay what so sorry i'm (laughs) just gonna interrupt here so buried treasure like it's such a thing in like movies and like just everything like pirates bury their treasure like that's what you hear all the time but i feel like i've never really heard of people actually finding it Right. So now I'm just thinking about the fact that they found this on the Gardner Island. Yeah. It's like, okay, so this is real. (laughs) Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's real. That's, I'm, okay. It's insane. Like, it's so insane. I was not expecting it to be, like, that truthful of a story. Like, they've they've probably found treasure buried in other places, too. But this is, like, the first time I'm really hearing about it. A found one, exactly. Not from, like, a movie. Right. Hmm. So... Um, and like, so you have to think, so that one, that the treasure that was found that was from him was equivalent to $300,000 today. And his big, big treasure, like he said, like the biggest treasure was buried on Liberty Island. So if that was 300,000, how much is on Liberty Island? Probably double. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's what I'm saying. So he also claimed to have buried treasure on Block Island. And that treasure has also not been found to this day. But there was a huge search of that island. And they actually used ground penetrating radar. And nothing has been found to this day. So that leads me to the question. Was he lying about having some treasure buried elsewhere? Or is he really good at hiding the treasure? Yeah, very good questions. Um, Because, like... He was, I mean, it's so what hard. He, what if he buried it with the church? Okay. So, <laughs> that's interesting <laughs> that you say that. <laughs> um, so, I did, like, okay, wait. Before, let me say the one last bullet before I move on to that. Hold that thought. So, one thing that I did forget to mention was that while he was living in New York City, 
he lived on Pearl Street, which apparently has the best view of Liberty Island that you can get in the city. Hmm. So that led people to believe that he was actually, like, keeping a really close eye on his treasure. And so Mm -hmm. that's also just interesting. But anyway, talking about Trinity Church. So I said I just so happened to stumble across this story, right? And it just really interested me, so that's why I did it. But what I did not realize until, like, literally the end of my notes was that one of the National Treasure movies – which at this point, it feels like I talk about National Treasure every single week. Okay, right. I understand that. But this one takes it to another level. So, I don't know. Have you seen National Treasure, any of them? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, <laughs> the what's crazy to me is that in the movie, I don't, I can't remember if it's the first or the second one. But in the movie, in one of the movies, there was literally a clue. Like, basically, if you haven't seen the movie, there's a bunch of clues, like, within history that leads to a treasure. Mm-hmm. And in the movie, one, there was a major clue found on Liberty Island. And at the end of the movie, spoiler alert, that I mean, it came out in like 2001. So you should have watched it by now if you haven't. Um, mm-hmm. The treasure, the final treasure ended up being buried underneath Trinity Church. Huh. So. Well, see, that's what I'm saying. Like. That's what I'm saying. So like the parallels between the movie and this story is wild and i'm like did they draw some sort of an inspiration from this legend see now that you say that though i am remembering um the trinity church from that movie specifically yeah. like i'm hearing the character say it exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> um um but yeah yeah so what do you think do you think that the treasure's on liberty island i don't know i feel like i want to go with the church but that's a good because people haven't good searched point. it it looks seems like right I don't know. I That's a real good point. Like, was he just, did he say Liberty Island to throw people off? Could have. Or, like, did he just have, I mean, could he have buried treasure in all of the places, all of the above? I mean, yeah, that could be true, too. Right. Also, I, okay, burying treasure, like, all right. <laughs> this is just me. like I'm just I need to think of how to word this. Like okay, when you find buried treasure. Yeah. Like these people in, in these movies, like National Treasure and stuff like that, um, they fi- they end up finding the treasure at the end and stuff. And it's like they're like, Oh my god, it's worth all this money. Yeah. What do you do with it? <laughs> like because <laughs> right. I feel like if you announce that okay, I have this stuff, then you would have to like send it to a museum or something and it's like mm-hmm. a a hi- historic artifact and you can't even really like like i guess they would pay you for it i don't know right. it so just seems not the only answer i have for you mm-hmm. literally comes from national treasure okay, okay. <laughs> and they like they were working with the police like the whole time in the movie so okay. they had like these archaeologists and like um anthropologists come in and, like, yeah, basically they bought the stuff from them. Since they found the treasure, it was technically theirs. So, like, okay. the people, like, bought it from them. So they didn't have any of the actual – I think they kept a few scrolls in the movie. Mm-hmm. But, like, all the rest of the stuff, they just, like, basically bought it off of them and put it okay. put it in the museums. So I don't, I don't know, know if that's how it would work in real life. Yeah. But that's like, how I don't know went. why, like, in – whenever I watch those movies, I'm like, this seems unrealistic. Like, it seems like the right. government and stuff, they'd be like, well, like – why do you have this? <laughs> Honestly, like, that's probably know. how it would be. They'd be like, oh, well, just because you found it doesn't mean it's yours. It's ours. Yeah, like, this is a historic <laughs> artifact and it belongs to our country. Yeah, um, I mean, they would so... have no problem doing that, so <laughs> it wouldn't surprise right. me. Right, or, like, I feel like you would have to go in the black market and sell it somehow. Right, right. And maybe, see, maybe somebody has found some of this stuff and Ooh. it's just not been, like, announced to the world and it's been, like, sold secretly Dude, yeah. You know? Like, that's I mean, what I think about with so when easily I see happen. buried treasure. It could mm-hmm. so easily happen. It's insane. But also, not even about the treasure part. What about his ghost? Like, is his ghost oh, really sorry. out there on the island trying to scare people away from the treasure? I don't know. Listen, I'm just saying there's been a lot of stories about people seeing his ghost. Okay, if, if it really is, then that makes me think, okay, maybe it is on... I yeah. know. That's what I'm saying. There's just so many questions. I'm left with so many questions. Hmm. Um, but yeah, that is the legend slash mystery of Captain Kidd. Jeez, that's crazy. Oh, I know. Was okay. Also, I have a question. Was Kidd like his last name? Like yeah, like it's K I D D. 
Yeah. I don't even remember his first name. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if I looked it up. Because they just always called him Captain Kidd. Right. right. Like, everybody. Like, he might as well just erase his first name. Doesn't have one. (laughs) 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 But, anyways, go look on Instagram. We'll post pics Mm -hmm. from our stories this week. Um, I'll show you a picture of the Trinity Church. It is beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's very old, obviously. Because it was built in, like, the... 16 1700s so. yeah and i look i looked it up while you were talking and it's an episcopal church oh yes okay so no confessions for him yeah no that's that makes it 10 times more interesting yeah right me. so it's like okay so you were he was confused <laughs> in his head yeah or maybe honestly maybe he just liked doing all the bad things but then felt bad like he felt guilt you know maybe that's right. why maybe. <laughs> he was like i know it's bad but i just love it uh-huh. It's possible. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Honestly, I feel like I would love to be a pirate. Yeah, see it kind of it probably would be fun, but not all of the like death. Is, no, so. no. No, or like, like the, that part of it. The scurvy. Mhm. Oh, the scurvy. Oh my god. <laughs> not the scurvy. <laughs> oh, Jeez. funny. Well, today you could just have like a little bottle of vitamin C. That's true. <laughs> you know, take your vitamins. Yeah. Have some antibiotics um, on hand on deck. Also, it's crazy to me that, like, pirates still probably exist out there. They do. I think we've talked about that They do. They do. They're definitely not as common. But, yeah. Like, if you... That scares me. (laughs) I know I'm talking, like, oh, I would love to be a pirate. Not actually. Like, I'm not brave enough to be a pirate. Yeah, like, theoretically. Like, like, imagine, theoretically, you're just on, like, a cruise ship, and then, like, a boat comes up and just takes it over. Right. But, like, do pirates go for cruise ships no but that's just like the only way i can imagine myself in the middle of the ocean i'm sure i'm surely not going to be on a regular boat i get way too seasick i don't even know if i could take a cruise yeah me too (laughs) i also don't want the pirates to get me so Mm -hmm. okay but can we also just talk one more second about pirates and the scooby-doo episode of or movie where like the ghost pirate ships and they're like on the cruise (laughs) I love yeah. that one. <laughs> I should have watched oh it before. Yeah, the story. see if Captain Kim was on there. Dang it. Okay, maybe I'll watch it and give you all an update. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but okay. um, go rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And mm-hmm. yeah, I guess that's really all I have for you all this week. What about you? Um. Yeah, except for the fact that now now you got to add to the list um, Steve Bonnet. Yes. You know. Steve Bonnet, 100%, is going on my list immediately. Yes. And everybody <laughs> needs to go watch Our Flag Means Death mm-hmm. on HBO. Not sponsored, but we definitely should be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, I guess I'll see yeah. you guys next week. Uh-huh. Cue the music.